live streamed and will be archived, recorded and will be archived for future use. And can I also ask that whenever you're called upon by the chair to speak, once you've raised your hand on screen and you're invited to speak, could you please ensure your camera is on for the viewing public as required under the legislation? Thank you. Uh, good morning, all. Um, it looks as if we are all here, apart from Councillor Charles. Right. Very good. Um, well, we'll move on to part one and uh, number one. Apologies for absence. I have no apologies, Chair. OK. Uh, item two, minutes of the meeting held on the 26th of February. Uh, I've read those through those and they seem to be a fair uh, report of what happened. Uh, anybody got any comments adverse to that? Uh, Gerwin Watkins. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, it was it was minute six six one. Um, the fourth paragraph down. Um, two members of the Standards Committee were of opinion that it would not seem appropriate for a review to be undertaken. Um, Mrs. Hallett was one of those. I was the other. Um, the minute doesn't accurately represent the view I expressed. My concern was that it wasn't possible to conduct an inquiry of the sort which was envisaged by the councillor who'd raised the question, because um, this committee has no power to investigate the conduct of officers. The committee has no power to investigate the conduct of past members of the council. Um, it wasn't that it wasn't that the proceedings had been criminal. Uh, I think that's that's a very fair point, and I seem to remember you did say that. Um, can we amend? We, I, I it, would I would be happy if Mrs. Hallett would be happy that that sentence ends with the word undertaken. In other words, that as as this matter had been a matter for criminal proceedings is deleted. I would be happy with a minute then. I have no so, problem with that. With the opinion that it was, yes, okay, yes, fine. Okay. So as from undertaken, uh, yes, all right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, uh, can I can I just mention that when you started, you said that the minutes were the twenty sixth of February. Just for the viewing public, Sorry, it is the twenty sixth of January. Twenty third of March. Twenty third of March. No. No, no. Yeah, no. you're quite right. Um, January. Yeah. 26th of January. Did I yeah. say February? Yes, that's fine, Chair. I misread, which seems to be the in phrase these days. OK, um, thank you. Do we, we, we've had the housekeeping as such. Yes, good, thanks. Right now to uh, item three, to receive declarations of interest and the nature of such interest under the Council's Code of Conduct. Are there any? No, none. Thank you very much. Can I ask you to note there that we have included and the nature, nature of such interest. Uh, reference might be made to this later on, but we in our meetings with uh, leaders and independent members and following our visits to various councils where people dis they declare their interest, but they don't say what their interest is. And uh, I think we've all found when we've gone to these meetings, well, somebody's got an interest, but we, we don't know what it is. So it's been suggested there and now to be included that when uh, declarations of interest are given, uh, the nature of that interest uh, should be disclosed as well, so everybody knows what's going on. But I just thought you might like to uh, note that. Sorry. If, if I could, if I could just um, comment there. Um, it, it's always been a requirement of the Members' Code of Conduct that nature should be disclosed. 
that the problem we've experienced is that all that there's been training in that regard, it all it hasn't always been the case that members, indeed not just the Vale Council, but as as you you mentioned, Chair, Town and Community Councils, that that aspect of the members' code of conduct it's adhered to um but um as, as the chair mentions that has been added to the agenda at, at his request and we're reflecting that throughout all of the agendas of the council and we'll be recommending that also to the town and community councils as a reminder um but as the chair mentioned we've also raised this um at all of the meetings that he's referred so that hopefully we should see an improvement in 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 that regard going forward. Thank you. Um, we now move on to item four, applications for dispensation. Uh, Debbie, can you take us to that, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, so we have four applications before committee this morning. Three of them um, are from um, a Guinness Powers Community Councillor, and there is a, a theme to the three applications, but we'll deal with them in turn. But just to introduce generally the, the, the common aspects of the, the three applications. So the, um, the particular Community Councillor, Debbie Evans, um, I can see yeah. Councillor Franks has his hand raised. Yes. You're on mute. Sorry to be a bit um, disruptive. Uh, I've just realised uh, I should have uh, uh, declared that I, uh, I'm an associate of uh, uh, Debbie Evans. So uh, I think uh, I will be cautious and declare an interest and withdraw from the uh, 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 from the meeting, though how anyone is going to get me back to the meeting, uh, I I don't know. Uh, I got, but but I do have my mobile next to me. Councillor Franks, all you need to do is up in the top hand corner. You see the leave button. Yes. If you leave, and what I will do then, I will request you to join. So if you um, leave the meeting, you'll hear the uh, tune coming through, requesting to join once the decisions have been made. Thank you very much. That's Bye, okay. everyone. Right. Thank you. Yes. So um, these are the three applications are um, with regards to um, the, the paragraphs in the regulations D, F and H. So just to remind members, D relates to um, the participation of the member in the business, particular business would not damage public confidence. F is the participation of the member um, would be justified by the member's particular role or expertise and H is the business relates to the finances or property of a voluntary organisation of whose management committee or board the member is a member otherwise than as a representative of the council and the member has no other interest in that business. Um, however, with regards to granting dispensations under paragraph H, so this applies to all three, the dispensation could only be to vote, so not to vote, uh, sorry, not to vote, uh, so only to speak. Um, so that applies to all three applications. So the first application, and, and indeed all three um, seek a dispensation until the next local election. Uh, so uh, uh, Councillor Evans is seeking dispensation to speak and vote on matters um, which do not relate to um, finance or property. So that's a, um, um, a, a belt and braces application. Um, so on matters of a general issue, um, but to speak. Um, so seeking a dispensation to speak where they relate to finance and property. And the first relates to um, matters um, concerning um, Sudra, uh, sorry, uh, just bear with me a moment. And there we are, Sudra Park. I knew I'd read it somewhere. Sudra Park, and the councillor um, advises that she's currently um, assists as a friend of Sudra Park, and also she's a member of the Dennis Powers Community Council, Council and a member of the subcommittee dealing with um, common spa open spaces and cemetery. Thank you. And your recommendation is um, that 
that that's allowed under D, D, F and H. It is, yes. Uh, any problems with that? No, thank you very much. We move on to the next next one, which is Seal Park, which presumably is very similar. It is, it is. So uh, as I've mentioned at the outset, so on this occasion, um, Councillor Evans advises that um, with regards to Seal Park, um, that she is a, a fr one of the, or she, and she chairs the Friends of Seal Park. So um, the application is on for all fours with the previous application, but this relates to Seal Park. Any problems with that? Follow the recommendation. Thank you very much. Thirdly, uh, Councillor Debbie Evans again, management of Dennis Powers Community Council allotments. Yes, and with regards to this application, Councillor Evans um, advises that she currently rents an allotment from the Dennis Powers Community Council. Good. A any uh, problems with that one? No. Thank you. And then the fourth one is. Sorry. I need to call Councillor Franks back. OK. Chair, yeah, Councillor Franks is back and Mrs Hallett is, um, has raised her hand. I was waving. I just lost sound for the last two or three minutes. Right. OK. Good. Um, just to confirm, those three applications went as agreed by the committee. Thank you. Sure about that. No, and um, uh, the, the the application. I think we need to sort of just pick through what's said to to pull out. Um, so with regards to this application, uh, Councillor Hennessy um, sets out actually on page two of the application that he's in receipt of a, a telecare service from the council, um, and um, he he's highlighted because of his experience as a user that he feels that he'll be able to offer advice and information to the council when dealing with matters relating to that particular service. He's seeking an application primarily to speak only if it's prejudicial. So um, we're, we're dealing with uh, um, matters if they are personal and prejudicial. Um, and again, it's an application up until the next um, local elections. Um, I think it's it's worth um, just highlighting because um, Councillor Hennessy does refer here to speaking and vote or, or vote at council meetings, um, uh, but to speak only if the issue is prejudicial. That if it is um, a um, a non prejudicial matter that he would have the opportunity to to speak um, if he is um, if he is a, a member of of that particular committee um, or if he's on council because he's a member of council if he's on a particular committee he would only have the um, the um, um, opportunity to speak if he isn't a member of a particular committee at the um, um, permission of the relevant chair. So this wouldn't give Councillor Hennessy a blanket right to speak on a matter, but it would mean that if he is as a non-member of a meeting given um, permission by the chair to speak, that he would have the opportunity of a dispensation if, if the um, committee is so minded. Um, and the grounds being uh, uh, relied on are D and F, which I referred to previously, which um, I think certainly um, um, appear the, the the sort of the the most appropriate grounds for him to to cite in the application. Right. Sorry, Richard, we can't hear you, Richard. 
Sorry, I went on mute as well. Uh, sorry, any problems with that application? Yes, Mrs Tinsley. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just a little concerned um, for Councillor Hennessy's own um, protection moving forward. It, it feels a little bit vague. Um, I'm not quite sure how that would be monitored in terms of who's making a decision that yes, this matter isn't prejudicial or, or no, it or it is or it isn't. Is it going to rest with the chair of each committee? I'm not quite sure how that process is going to work. Should I come in there? Yeah. So it's a matter for the um, individual member um, based on the training that they've had. However, um, members always have the opportunity to seek guidance if they need a little bit of, a, of a support. So that's available from democratic services officers and indeed we can pick that up in the letter um, um, you know addressing this matter um, so that uh, Councillor Hennessy um, appreciates uh, where he can be signposted to if he needs some additional support. Good thank thank you for that uh, no other problems no so that could be that will be uh, granted in, in accordance with your recommendation. Thank you. Um, before we leave that, uh, there's a nice small matter which occurs to me. If you look at um, the applications by Councillor Debbie Evans, her address has been completely uh, redacted. Um, this is something that we have raised again with, uh, or has been raised rather, with our meetings with ch with the uh, lead group leaders as to whether councillors uh, addresses should be made public or not. Um, what's been the practice up to now is, for example, if you lived, if one of the councillors lived in six High Street, Barry, and then the postcode, six would be uh, redacted, as would the postcode. Um, I think, and I think most of us think that High Street, that the address should be completely redacted. Um, we are, do live in strange times and uh, I think councillors should be protected as much as possible. Um, uh, I know it's, I, I had this in another life with a name like Hendicott, it's quite easy to find some, there are not many, and I see we've got Frank and Birch, so um, it's it's been suggested that the uh, uh, the whole of the dress ought to be deleted. Um, do you want to comment on that, Debbie? I can see um, um, Mr Alexander, his, his hand raised, but if I just sort of step in at this point, the um, approach that we've adopted up until now is in line with the Ombudsman's guidance. Um, so that, that was the approach we adopted. Uh, uh, there was uh, quite a, a, a bit of discussion on this post the local elections, but it is a point that has been raised um, um, as we've had the discussion with the independent members and also the political group leaders and um, and and it is in line uh, with the um, legislation which came in place um, um, in the run-up to the the elections to um, ensure that addresses um, were not uh, home addresses um, were not published um, um, in respect of candidates um, standing for election. Uh, so it is in line with that, um, and um, it, it, it certainly, um, having received the representations, seems a sensible way forward. Thanks, Mr. Alexander. Thanks. I was just going to um, offer the observation that I support all of that. I've been through these sort of discussions in another place as part of the remuneration board of the Senate. And of course, there is great concern about security of members, whether at national or local level. So I think the more that can be done to protect them um, in, in terms of their security implications, I think that's a sensible way forward. Thank you very much. Can, uh, Councillor Franks. Um, thank you. Um, as you've hinted, I've got a distinct name, though um, I remind people Tommy Franks was the head of the American Army, so uh, it's best not to uh, mess with me in some circumstances. Um, it goes against the grain, I'll be honest with you, for, for councillors' addresses to be uh, removed from 
basically the public domain. Uh, 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 I will. Sorry, you. Sorry, you frozen there. Councillor Franks, we can't hear you. Everyone in my. Um, Hello. Sorry, we oh, can't. Can, um, can you go right. start again? Uh, I won't. Uh, OK, um, I won't repeat my weak joke. You'll no, be okay. pleased to hear. Um, basically, what I'm saying is that this goes against the grain uh, for me anyway. I think I think um, uh, uh, councillors and MPs and members of the Senate should be uh, uh, identifiable. Um, I know we we do live in strange times, uh, but um, I, I don't feel at all comfortable that um, we can hide behind uh, um, uh, such uh, such practices, though. Um, uh, and I don't know if it's necessary either. Um, uh, it's uh, if someone wants to find out where you live, they'll find out where you live. Uh, but um, I'm, that's this is just a if you like a personal observation. Uh, I'm not proposing anything different. It's just um, I, I, I'm saddened that we, we uh, it's it seems necessary to go down this road. OK, well, thank you. We'll we'll note that. Councillor Birch, do you have a view on this? I agree with 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 Chris that if people want to find out where they live, they will. And until, in fact, until this election, I had always put my address without too, many, too much thought about it on all of the papers going forward and not care of the Vale of Morgan Council, etc. But I think that there is, we have keyboard warriors out there who think that it is entertaining to put people's address on there. I mean, we have in Penarth, you may be aware, Penarth Daily News, which is allowing people to put the addresses of councillors in the chat so that they can have all the rubbish dumped outside their houses. Mm. That comment was put on to a on to Penarth Daily News last night. And in fact, I'm just about to screenshot it and send it on to Debbie because it's it's so unpleasant. So while I want to be accessible at all times. I have got a phone. I have got an email. I don't necessarily need to see people face to face in order to discuss matters with them. And in fact, I run surgeries on a Saturday morning, uh, all everyone in Penafters, so that people can come in and talk to us. But I, I do worry. We do live in quite different times from when I came into politics, which is over 25 years ago. And it feels like a more malevolent atmosphere than it did then. And I think I think uh, Chris would agree that we get far more unpleasant stuff now than we ever did. Some of it quite personal and unpleasant. So I, I'm in favour of redacting it. I'm afraid I, I wouldn't. I don't want to be in that situation. And I think even though Chris said he doesn't want it, he regrets the times we live in. Well, yes, mm -hmm. but that we have to be realistic. That is what it's like. I don't want it to be like that. But I have my own safety to consider. Well, thank you. Thank you for those thoughts. I mean, we're not making any decision today or any recommendation, but I just thought it was interesting following our discussion with the council leaders that I brought that to your attention. So, uh, right, we'll now move on to item five, which is observations by independent members of town and community council committee meetings. Uh, have there been any since the last meeting? I have to say I haven't been anywhere. Right, uh, Mrs Tinsley, I gather you've uh, been uh, out and about or stayed at home and watched. <laughs> um, I omitted one from our last meeting. I should have reported on Sangan uh, Community Council, which was a, um, a video meeting. Um, it was particularly relevant and I should have reported on it because there were tensions during that meeting, partly um, due to one of the participants requesting um, some finance for a matter which was refused uh, and um, partly for another item being raised which wasn't agended uh, but was quite persistently pursued during the meeting um, 
both matters handled by the chair well, um, but it was quite a challenging meeting to observe. And I think I, on reflection, um, having attended two further meetings in person, it would have been, had I been able to attend in person, a good meeting to be in person. There was a lot going on that perhaps I didn't pick up on on screen. So that was Klangan. And I think I'm due to a repeat visit to Klangan just to see where they got to in terms of um, the challenges they were facing with that one. However, since then, the two I've been to for this meeting, uh, Wenvo, um, lovely meeting, very welcomed, um, very helpful. Uh, I was in person, very helpful to have the signs put on the desk. I was given a name sign myself, which is a good job, so I didn't forget who I was. Um, declarations of interest were made. It, it followed a very good format. I was asked to leave for part two. Um, the, the headline from that meeting was that they are mostly new councillors uh, and they're due um, an audit very shortly for matters which are outside of their control. So they're, they're going to be audited on matters which they weren't in post to deal with. And there was some frustration expressed about that, but a very clear commitment that whatever was found, they intended to move forward very positively. So that was a very good meeting. Uh, and the other meeting was St. Athen. Uh, again, very good meeting, started promptly. Um, it There was one late item on the agenda that um, a planning matter that they decided uh, they would pursue. Um, in terms of the matters that were um, prejudicial, there were in both meetings arrangements were made so that another councillor could speak on behalf of those matters um, so that the matter was covered covered extremely well and thoroughly and resolved uh, and it was made clear what that prejudicial interest was so I have no issues with either St Athen or Wenvo. Good very good thank you and Mr Alexander you're on mute Yes, I'm just on muting now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to say it was my pleasure to visit, uh, to make two visits, uh, but they were remote ones. Um, the first one was to St George's and St Bride's Super ED Community Council on the 15th of this month. And that was a, a lovely meeting. It was very courteously run by the chair and followed a logical course of business. And actually, I commend it as a well-run process. My only concern was that uh, as it was a Zoom meeting, um, the names of elected members were not identified within the Zoom um, notation in each room. So it wasn't, it wouldn't have been clear to a member of the public who came into the meeting, um, who it was that was speaking at, at any one time. Um, my other concern, is, uh, and this is just a small point, I was um, encouraged to stay for part two of the agenda. And uh, I made it clear that having regard to Nolan principles, I should not and withdrew from the meeting. So I think perhaps it might be helpful were there to be a little point of guidance offered in relation to the distinction between part one and part two and who should be present and who should not be present. Um, the Vale of Glamorgan um, councillor was also present and also obviously withdrew at that point at the same time that I did. Um, for St Nicholas with Bonvalston on the 6th of February, that too was a remote meeting by Zoom, but on this occasion each of the elected members did have a name identifier. Uh, there were no, uh, there were members of the public present, um, but it wasn't clear to me uh, members of the public seemed to drop in and out of the meeting and it wasn't clear to me how many members of the public were in the process at one time. But of course, you can only see a limited number of people on the screen. I think it's probably about nine at one time. Um, the agenda had a slot for discussion by members of the public and that was uh, that was actively pursued. 
Um, and so there is great evidence of public interest and involvement in that meeting. And I think that's obviously something which um, should be encouraged. Um, my one observation, and I report this accurately, um, is that I was simply welcomed as the person who was monitoring the meeting. Um, and um, that's that's an accurate um, description of what is said, and um, I offer no comment. Uh, but both uh, well-run meetings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the picture that I'm getting is that these meetings certainly are improving uh, since we've started going going around. Um, and sorry to keep harking on with the meeting with the uh, council, uh, or sorry, the, the group heads and the independent members, but it was raised again as to whether we actually ought to disclose who that we're going, whether we shouldn't um, go just turn up as Joe Public rather than they, they be warned. Um, I ha I've got, I think that's not a bad idea, I have to say. I've always thought that was a good occasion. And I wonder at some time whether we might, for say a period of three months, not, not actually say that we're going along um, and just turn up as we normally do. Uh, it, th there's the risk that because they know we're there, they're going to be on best behaviour and um, it, we may be seeing a sanitised version. Any thoughts on that? Yes, Mrs Hallett? Can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we've had this discussion once before and I think it would be perceived as um, sneaky. I think that um, just to turn up at a meeting, I don't think as an individual I would be pleased with that. I just, when we're going along in the role that we are, they're treating us and we have to take it on. They've been trained, these people have been trained, these people know what is expected from them. So I think to just turn up is, is not appropriate. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Birch. Well, I have to say, I mean, I've been on Penarth Town Council for a very, very long time now. And I, I, while I quite appreciate what Mrs Hallett has said, I think that if you sent out um, a kind of general warning six months in advance that you will be attending at some point in the following, you know, in the, in the ensuing six months or whatever, mm -hmm. um, then you have given them fair warning but um, not necessarily very specifically. And I would hope that everyone's behaviour is up to scratch on every single occasion. And in fact, we know from the reports I've been listening to that even when some people are warned, it doesn't make them behave. I mean, we have had some very interesting accounts of things happening in meetings, even when people have known full well that they are going to be observed. And sometimes that person is even sitting in the room with them and they still don't behave. So um, I think just landing on them with absolutely no warning whatsoever. But I think if you could say you're going to be seen at some point in the next six months or whatever, I think that would be that would be fair. And I, I, I would be accepting of that. OK, well, uh, I'm not going to go into to that much further today, but uh, you, you sat on Penarth Council. Uh, have you noticed any difference if if there is somebody from uh, Standards Committee there? I think that there are T's crossed and I's dotted, such as making sure everybody introduces each other. Um, and possibly we're bit more punctilious about being about introducing members of the public and so forth but other than that our the actual interchanges are are as they as they normally are i think we're oh. just very careful to observe the kind of technical details whereas it might be slightly more informal if we didn't have an observer there but no the standard of behavior is the same i'm pleased to say yeah so you're on yes well that's good um mr alexander I just wanted to come back to Nolan principles and say that for me, there's an issue as to transparency. And, um, you know, I, I don't think going in without uh, any warning whatsoever is, is actually acceptable. But I do think that the point that Councillor Birch has made about a general uh, intimation being provided would actually satisfy that point. Thank you. Fine. I 
right. Well, that uh, we've discussed it. I don't propose to take it any further. It was just a matter that was raised, and it's interesting to have the um, have the views of of you all. Um, but we'll continue with this, and uh, perhaps Karen, you can send out uh, a list uh, so that we can make some uh, meet uh, attend some meetings before the <laughs> next hearing. And I'll try and make sure I go along this time. Right, thank you very much. Um, Standards Committee Forward Work Program, which is item six. Uh, we've got that in front of you. Uh, do you want to comment on it? Very, very briefly. So the um, proposed forward work programme for discussion is at Appendix 1. Um, just a, a couple of points to mention with regards to the report. Um, the report mentions that the Council's annual meeting is on the 10th of May, um, and then it refers to the, the, the Standards Committee following the annual meeting being on the 25th of May. I know um, correspondence has, has been sent um, to members um, with regards to that date change into the 8th of June. So it's just to um, give that a mention and that will be, as, as you'll see from the forward work programme, uh, when the um, uh, draft annual report will come before members for consideration. Um, also, just to mention with regards to paragraph 2.4 of the report, uh, that, that particular point about the feedback has been actioned already, so it doesn't appear on the forward work programme, albeit um, I think it's worth mentioning that consideration is being given um, to um, um, uh, arranging for some refresher training on the ethical standards framework for members um, part way through the term. Um, that's a point that's been raised in with the by the, um, the political group leaders. So that's something we're taking on board and um, will be the, the subject of um, further consideration. But that, that's all I wanted to say um, other than um, to, to invite consideration of the forward work programme. Thank you. Any comments on that? Anything else you think we ought to consider? It's a bit difficult looking ahead that far, but uh, are there any comments? No. Oh, hang on. Yeah, Councillor Franks, yes. Um, sorry, all these press pressing of buttons right. is uh, <laughs> a strain. Um, at first sight, this looks a little bit daunting, but really, it's it's by and large routine, isn't it? There's there are no surprises, I don't think, here. The the only question I think I'd ask um, is about the Richard Penn um, report. Now, um, sorry to show my ignorance, but can someone um, update me on this? Uh, I, I, I'm not totally familiar with this report. OK, can I suggest we leave that um... Uh, for the time being, because um, Debbie is going to in the next few uh, uh, items, there will be reference to that. OK, if, uh, if at the end of the da uh, of of that, there's something you don't understand, I'll um, you, you can raise it then. All right. Thank, thank you. Good. Uh, anything else? Yes, Mr. Alexander. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to come back to 2.4, which Debbie referred to a moment ago and raise a point which is perhaps slightly tangential, but I don't know where else it's appropriate to raise it on the agenda. And to say that we're still short of a town and community councillor on this committee, and I'm concerned about that because it's a democratic deficit, and I don't think it's appropriate to have a democratic deficit like that for um, as a long-standing situation. And I just wondered if anything was being done to address that. If it's out of order at this point, I'm no, perfectly happy to be told so. No, I think it's a good, it needed to be raised somewhere and we can deal with it now. Debbie? Oh, sorry, Karen will deal with it. Sorry, Karen will deal with it. Yeah, yes, thank you very much. I've, I have got two applications in with me. What I need to do is arrange an appointments committee panel to sit and hopefully that will be done over the next couple of weeks. And then we can come back to um, the appointments committee 
of the Standards Committee to consider the appointment and then obviously we'll report back to the Standards Committee then when that appointment has been made. Apologies for the delay, but it has been, um, we've been waiting for applications to come through. I've now got them and I now need to go back to those candidates to see if they are still um, keen to continue with their applications and then obviously contact the members to set up the meeting for the panel to consider. Thank you, Chair, yes. that's very yeah. helpful. Yes. Thank you. Debbie? Yeah, yes, just on the back of that, I knew that Karen had the, the latest position, but just to assure members that um, um, officers have been very rigorous in this regard and we have had to go out um, seeking um, interest in um, taking up this position on a number of occasions. So um, it's, it's not for the want of trying, but I'm pleased to say we do have those two applications and we'll be in a position to proceed. Um. Will the new person be in post by the 8th of June? Hopefully. Well, well let's let, let's hope we can work to that because I, I think as uh, Mr Alexander says, it, we, we've now been a year without, so um, the, the sooner the better. That is my intention, Chair, Good. so hopefully we will get your report back to you. Yeah, thank you. Good, thank you very much. Uh, now we'll go on to the update re the National Standards Committee Forum, All Wales Monitoring Officers Group Meetings, and I beg your pardon. Yes, 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 I'm sorry, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, and the independent member meetings. And if in that you want to expand on the uh, Richard Penn report, that will be helpful. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. I think uh, you know, it's a comprehensive report and, um, you know, happy to pick up any points that members um, may wish me to comment on. But with regard to the Richard Penn report, this was the um, uh, independent consultant um, instructed by Welsh Government to review the ethical um, framework. Um, and we can forward on to you, Councillor Franks, um, a report that's previously been brought to Standards Committee before you were a member of the Standards Committee, where the um, uh, Richard Penn's report was appended, so um, it's quite a lengthy report. Where we are um, currently is that um, we've been advised by colleagues in Welsh Government that the, there is um, a consultation which is due to be um, issued. We've been told shortly, but I'm not quite sure how shortly shortly is, um, so we're keep it, keeping um, a watchful eye out for that. So a consultation by Welsh Government in respect of a number of the recommendations from Richard Penn. It'll be a 12 week consultation and once that consultation is available, I'll be bringing a report back to Standards Committee for, for comment and then taking that on those views on to Cabinet. Um, so there'll be more, more of this um, coming um, in the not too distant future once we have that consultation document from Welsh Government. But in the interim, as I say, we'll get the report over to you, uh, Councillor Franks. Thank you. OK. Uh, are there any comments or any, anybody want to say anything? Mrs Hallett, you're mute. You're mute, Mrs Hallett. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Can you remind me or can Debbie remind me when the report was actually released? Because I remember it being discussed at one of the conferences we attended. Why is it taking so long to implement? Because it was well and truly received and I thought it was a very good report. Yeah, just just to add, of course, it was um, a, a commission on uh, on the part of um, Welsh government. Um, so it, it's it's I suppose it's it's their report and for Welsh government to to deal with and um, and certainly um, um, colleagues from Welsh government have indicated that they've had regard regard to the report and the next step will be the consultation process. I think um, off, off the top of my head it was a July 21 report when it was finalised so yes you, um, you are right it, it, it um, um, was um, published um, almost uh, two years ago now. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Mr Alexander. Thank you. Um, my observation would be, uh, having regard to the publication date that um, Debbie has just referred to, it's taking Welsh Government rather a long time to do anything about this. Um, and I, I wonder, Debbie, if it's appropriate to seek clarification from them as to when 
this is likely to actually emerge as a consultation because my feeling is it's you know the progress on it shall i say has been somewhat lethargic and i hope i'm not being disrespectful to welsh government uh debbie yes just to mention um the um assistant director i believe it's the title um, um for responsibility for this particular area, Lisa James attended our monitoring officer meeting on the 3rd of March and did advise that the matter was um, um, it was imminent. But um, certainly we can drop a line to um, to the to the assistant director to seek further clarification. I think, Mr Alexander, you were present at the meeting at the forum in January when it was it was imminent i think at the last me meeting it was even more imminent but i think it's on the it's, I, i'm not sure it's on the front burner at the welsh government and uh, i wouldn't hold your breath on it uh councillor franks do your lines uh, thank you um this is um this is quite a detailed report isn't it so um I'm not sure if I've uh, grasped every uh, every point and every nuance, but um, and I suppose the focus is on uh, encouraging uh, elected members to um, uh, keep up the standards. Uh, however, there's there is the other side of the coin in terms of um, the elected members uh, being able to. Uh, fully scrutinise the actions of uh, the authority. Now, um, I, I, I'd like some um, assurance that there's nothing here that um, uh, is going to hinder uh, councillors uh, who are unhappy with the performance of the uh, of the authority. Um, in, I'm just going to go to the report now. Um, for instance, it does say uh, on 2.11, um, particular additional powers in respect of reporting restrictions. Well, um, I, I'm not sure what that means, but uh, I, oh, I'm sorry, all these flipping buttons. Uh, uh, but uh, some of us, do feel it's a struggle sometimes to uh, to scrutinise uh, uh, council meetings properly, and um, that is not good. Uh, and when we wish to point out failings, for instance, the failure to have physical meetings, uh, I don't know, but I suspect we're almost the last council in Wales. Uh, not to have physical meetings. Will, will anything in agenda item seven hinder our work? Well, I, I'm not sure that this is strictly um, on the agenda is to discuss that report. But Debbie, do you feel able to comment on that? All I'd say with regards to the reporting restrictions that relates to um, functions um, regarding the adjudication panel for Wales. So it's um, in the context and, and one, once you see the full report from Richard Penn, I think it's a 44 page report if I remember rightly, you will see that um, he breaks down um, the, his recommendations and that particular recommendation about reporting restrictions, anonymity, um, of witnesses and um, relates to the adjudication panel for Wales. Oh, right. OK, All right. OK, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Sorry if I wavered off the uh, That's right. <laughs> agenda, but there you are. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully we've got you back on. There we are. Good. Uh, anything else on item seven? Um, do you want to refer to the group leader and in independent meetings or is it sufficient? Um, I've, I've, I've set it out um, yeah. within the body of the um, the, the, the report, um, the areas that we've covered, um, and, and certainly I think the, the view has been that they've been very, uh, um, um, very positively received, um, and and very constructive, um, um, with with um, um, you know good engagement. So the the the, the details um, I, I won't go through of those meetings. 
but um, it has been um, a balance between um, sharing, keeping um, political group leaders and indeed the independent members so they don't feel they're left behind of what's going on with regards to legislation, with regards to guidance, um, views being expressed um, by, by um, you know, um, uh, people such as the P Public Services Ombudsman, um, so that's that they're being picked up. But also we've had the opportunity to go into a little bit more granular detail about some um, concerns uh, or um, uh, some potential um, aspects where there may be um, uh, concerns regarding compliance of the Members' Code of Conduct. So they have been very, very, very broad. And as I say, um, um, very, there's been very good engagement. Yes, thank you. And I should add that the the final independent member, I, I think we're hopefully meeting after today, uh, after this meeting now. So uh, I think we're lucky we're not in uh, Pembroke, where I think they've got 25 independent members, so they were <laughs> going to have to have 25 meetings, but uh, there we are. Right, uh, item eight, correspondence with the Public Services Ombudsman for Wales. Thank you. So um, this is a standard report. Um, there has been correspondence um, relating to ongoing matters, so no new matters, but ongoing matters, and I'll um, advise uh, members in part two of the agenda, given the confidentiality aspect. Thank you. Uh, nothing has been referred to me as yet as being urgent. No. So that concludes part one. Do you agree that we now move to part two? Yes. So okay. if, so if you could, if you could bear with us yes. for a couple.